everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer someday. <laughs> I have not been uh, podcasting in a while, uh, but I wanted to get back into it, so here I am. I will not be talking about all of the things that I've been working on. I've just made a small selection because... If you know me, you know that I work on a lot of things at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but you know what I mean. Um, and it would be a chore to talk about all the things. So I'm just going to talk about a few things. But before I start, um, <laughs> I totally forgot about this. So you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and on all of the other platforms with these handles. I'm totally forgetting how I usually say this, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, yeah, and I also have a newsletter. Uh, so you can sign up for my newsletter via my website. There will be a pop-up form and there's this thing in the top right corner where you can enter your email address and also in my Instagram pro profile and my link tree you can sign up from my newsletter right there um, and in my next newsletter there will be a discount code for this pattern Ta -ta -da! these are the wild strawberry socks and as you can see they are color work and they use variegated yarns and I love them. Um, the yarn is Scapius R Tribe in the colorways Yelena Creations, which is this one, which is a really um, dark purple kind of sunset color as well. Um, and I've combined it with Hack Marak, which is this um, lighter color. You see here, so the darker color is Yelena Creations and the lighter color is Hak Madrak. But in some places they are really similar and uh, I think that gives a really, really nice effect. You can see it really well here, how similar they are. So, um, yeah, I'm sitting in a different position so the camera is a little bit further away from me. So I am struggling to show you details. Uh, because this is a, I think, really interesting stitch pattern. I have used a different technique. Uh, I'm using a bohus knitting technique, uh, which is a technique from um, Sweden in, uh, from 1939. Um, I guess I could tell you a little bit about the history of bohus knitting. So in uh, Sweden, 1930, 1940, there was a economical crisis and people were struggling to um, to get enough money for uh, you know their daily lives, and um, uh, there was this uh, woman who decided to um, organize groups to. Um, you know, to generate income for these families. And what they did is they, they used a traditional um, craft, um, which was knitting, and then specifically bohus knitting, which is a combination of color work knitting and pearl stitches. And they used this technique to um, to create products and then they sold it and then the profits um, went to these uh, poor families. Um, and I thought that was an awesome story. And uh, the, um, it was, it was just a huge surge in, in, you know, knitting and um, uh, there were famous designers working together with this organization, coming up with new designs, uh, new patterns that um, that the women in this organization could make. Uh, and um, it resulted in a lot of beautiful sweaters. Um, yeah, mostly sweaters. Um, 
and so Boha's knitting uses color work and pearl stitches to create a kind of texture but they also used uh, wool together with angora and angora has a kind of haze over it so um, uh, the most uh, famous design is the wild apple sweater and it just has this beautiful yoke uh, yoke design and it's just covered in this haze like this mist and uh, that's um, due to the uh, angora fiber and it's just beautiful um, and I think in the 1970s there was a huge revival of Boas knitting again and there's even a Boas um, uh, museum I think Boas is the area in Sweden that this knitting uh, technique originated from so Boas is not only the knitting but um so the Bohas museum is about a lot of other things as well but uh one of the things they have is uh they have their knitting patterns just up on the website and you can try it out um actually let me show you my samples for my swatches this is my sample sock snake um i have to hide a few <laughs> of the patterns of this sock snake because uh, they will be upcoming patterns. Um, but so in April I attended a Bohus knitting workshop um, here in the Netherlands. Um, and so it wasn't like very authentic or something. It's just like an appreciation of the uh, Swedish knitting technique. And uh, we talked about the museum and there are a lot of books on this technique. And uh, so these are some of the uh, patterns. And let me see. So here is the pattern in just color work. So I've not used any pearl stitches. Uh, and then here, um, I've converted, uh, which one is it? So I think here, all the, um, pink stitches are pearl stitches. And here, all the gray stitches are pearl stitches. And you can really see the difference. I mean, look at that. And also, it feels amazing. Just, um... This texture is just so so lovely and especially for socks I think even though socks weren't a traditional thing to knit with the Boas uh, technique um, and then here's another one so this is uh, diagonal uh, stripes and then I have experimented with uh, knitting every um, every green stitch as a pearl stitch or every blue, blue stitch and then just um, yeah have fun with it and then I came up with this little stitch pattern and this is the pattern that I am using in my socks and so here are the socks uh, and I've used the stitch pattern almost all over except for on the sole and here you can see what the stitch pattern looks like without pearls and then with pearls. <laughs> see? I, I think it's just so interesting and um, yeah. So this is an upcoming pattern. I hope to release it this week. Uh, I've had a little uh, trouble <laughs> with the pattern because it's just my own fault. I uh, never really knit the size that I describe in the pattern, which, you know, I'm just making things difficult for myself. Um, yeah, so I have to figure that out and then I can get the pattern published. And so in my newsletter, there will be a, a discount code for this pattern. So if you want to get this pattern be sure to subscribe to my newsletter uh, and of course also for a lot of other things um, at the moment I'm not really regular with my newsletters but I try I'm trying to be good so <laughs> there there will be more newsletters and also for any upcoming shop updates or new videos or new blog posts new patterns just the newsletter is the place to be um, 
Right, so, and did I tell you the name of these socks? So, uh, the name is Wild Strawberry Socks um, because the uh, stitch pattern just kind of makes me think of the uh, seeds on, on strawberries, like the kind of dimples on strawberries. And because uh, one of the most popular boho knitting um, uh, patterns is the wild apple um, sweater. I thought, okay, wild apple, wild strawberry. Uh, and then when I googled wild strawberries, uh, it happens to be a Swedish film as well, which I thought was uh, a perfect coincidence. And I have some uh, wild strawberries in my garden, so I picked a few of those and then did a little photo shoot and was really cute. Okay, so that was, uh, or those were the wild strawberry socks. Up next, uh, I am hosting a new make-along together with Carrie from Show Real Studios. Uh, Carrie is a uh, fantastic indie dyer and uh, she asked me to uh, host a mal together with her and it is the Christmas is coming mal. Yes, it's July, so it's kind of the Christmas in July theme. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, even though we say Christmas, we mean every kind of festive holiday, festive event uh, you may be wanting to knit gifts for, or crocheting gifts. So, um, the idea for this mal originated when, um, uh, when I showed you my uh, abundance of whips earlier this year, and uh, one of them were my uh, Christmas socks. Um, that... I think I cast them on in 2015, 16, and I've knit a bit on them, a little bit, <laughs> and it's just so interesting to see how my gauge has changed, um, and also my uh, color work knitting skills. Uh, so these are my Christmas socks, and I think they are super cute, uh, but when I got to the heel, they didn't really fit, and I just lost interest, lost motivation. Um, but right now, with a little bit of wrestling, they fit, and this is before blocking, so I am hopeful. Also, it's my first garter stitch heel, which I'm really intrigued by. It's very stretchy, so yeah, it's a German shorter heel, but then just with a uh, garter. So I'm uh, just test driving this one. I don't know if it'll be too baggy or something. Yes, but uh, so the idea <laughs> for this mal came when I showed my Christmas socks and uh, Carrie wanted to help me get these finished. Uh, so she said, well, how about, as a little extra motivation, we host a Mal, and um, she is very kindly offering prizes for this Mal, and I will be offering some prizes as well. So um, I think I will be dying up something special uh, for this Mal. Uh, so there are two ways in which you can enter. One is uh, Christmassy, festive themed things, uh, whether they are whips or new cast ons, those count. Uh, and you can uh, enter or you can participate in the um, make along uh, by posting your pictures or your stories in the Ravelry thread, which is in my Ravelry group, uh, the New Leaf podcast group. Or you can use the hashtag, which is Christmas is coming Mal and uh, also tag Show Real Studios and me, newleafdesigns.nl and uh, via both ways you'll be able to um, um, win prizes. Uh, and I want to say this is for both knitters and crocheters and uh, it doesn't really matter if you finish a thing, it's just about, whoa, loud scooter going by. Um, it's just about, you know, motivating each other uh, to work on Christmas projects or long languishing whips. Like me. So anything you have laying around and you want to get 
um, more knitting or crocheting done on that just get it out and uh, work on it together with us uh, use the hashtag or post in the Ravelry thread it'll be loads of fun uh, so I hope to be also working on uh, my Olga cardigan <laughs> that has been uh, neglected for a while um, yeah I hope to get something done on that but first my Christmas socks yeah yes so uh, definitely check out the Ravelry group uh, and the hashtag and uh, follow Carrie she is show real studios on uh, Instagram and um, yeah just knit along with us uh, and talking about Carrie um, I am making a project with her yarn which is the My Boy Lollipop sweater and I have um, cast on for this project in May. I took it on my trip. Uh, I went to Egypt for some awesome diving. It's amazing. Uh, and I was actually almost finished. I had the body finished and I was onto the sleeves when I noticed that uh, it was very baggy. Uh, so um, the My Boy Lollipop sweater is a design by Nancy Ritchie, um, who is getting curly with it on uh, Instagram and uh, it was actually so funny because one of the very very first patterns that I have knit is also a design by Nancy Ritchie was the Vanessa headband it was this kind of braided headband so so pretty it was you know back in 2012 one of the first things that I ever knit um, and just finding Finding Nancy again and seeing her Ravelry page and seeing that headband again, it just made me like, <gasps> like, yeah, it was destiny. <laughs> so I am working on the My Boy Lollipop sweater, which is a super cute t-shirt. Um, and so it has some increases for the bust that I have omitted in this version because it was getting too baggy for me uh, and uh, uh, yeah my gauge was a little bit off I uh, I always knit a little bit well I, I tend to knit looser but for for this uh, gauge I, uh, I had a tighter gauge so I knit the size 36 inch because I am a 37 inch bust and you need to um, knit a size that is two inches smaller but because I had already a tighter gauge I thought okay maybe one inch smaller will work and turns out that it didn't that oh, that it didn't um, yes so now I am working on a 34 inch bust which I hope will work uh, so this is Carrie's beautiful yarn. It reminds me of the ocean, which is why I took it to Egypt with me. Um, so, so beautiful. I have the tag right here. Yeah. So it's Show Real Studios, and this is her Slufutsu um, colorway, which is a um comic from uh, texas uh really cute uh and this is her dk base which is delectable dk uh 215 meters on 100 grams and it's 100 percent superwash merino and so it doesn't look like much now it looks like a baby's outfit but um yeah <laughs> i hope it will fit yes more on that soon but just uh, look at that gorgeous blue and it's so squishy yes very very excited for this the ribbing is folding over a little bit so I'm just gonna wait it out see what happens um, but I use the same needle size for the ribbing as for the main body so kind of my fault so I might need to do the ripping again with a size three millimeter 
Um, up next, yes, I have also been working on a shawl. And the crochet portion of the shawl is finished. And yeah, I'm just going to show you. So <laughs> this is the shawl. I always love showing FOs on my podcast because when I look at the camera screen, it just looks amazing every time. And it's doing something weird with the colors on my screen, but I like it. Oh, it's so good. So it's a half moon shawl. Oh, I love it! And it's the Pom Pom Ripple Wrap. And it is from Yarn 7, um, which has a theme, which is a reef. Perfect for me. <laughs> uh, and this is the shawl that I am making, the pom-pom ripple wrap. So I will be adding pom-poms to the edge. Um... Where is it? There it is. Gorgeous, right? It's a pattern by Esme Crick, who is Red Sparrow Crochet on Instagram. And uh, I just love her projects. And uh, so this shawl is in black and white, as you can see. But uh, to stay kind of in the reef theme, I decided to give it kind of kelp colors. Uh, kind of like the, um, oh, where is it? There is this um, beautiful blanket by Martin, I think. Yes, Martin up north. This is, this is the kelp blanket. Can you see the, yeah. Kind of looks like kelp uh, and I decided to uh, use those colors for the shawl. I've also picked out some colors for the pom-poms and they will be these colors and another one I think. Yeah. And red. I think that will be very cute. And here are the pom-poms I have already made. <laughs> so, um, I think that will look very cute when it's attached to the, um, the edge of the shawl. And it will get and give a little bit more um, drape to the shawl as well. I love these colors. Uh, yeah, but pom-poms are uh, not my favorite thing to make. And I had a little bit of a um, just sore spot on my finger. So I, uh, and because it's just winding yarn around and around and around and it's going over that same spot again and again, uh, it wasn't really um, fun. And uh, let me show you this bowl as well. This boil, uh, boil. This bowl is uh, hat made by my boyfriend. Um, we had a, a pottery class again, and this is one of the bowls he made. It even says his name on the bottom and um, the the uh, co and glaze color number and the date. So um, it's always a very special. Um, souvenir. Um, I have a bowl of mine on the table as well. Let me just grab that. Right now it's filled with uh, peony leaves. Just thought it looked cute. Um, but yeah, this is uh, one of the bowls I made. It has a ridge here, but it doesn't on this side. So anyway, um, but I'm really proud of this because it's really thin. So, um, and uh, it's always really difficult to get it um, thin enough. Yeah, but I really like it. And can you see it says my name? 
right there. <laughs> Proof that I made it. But I wanted to tell you something else about this yarn bookazine because there are two more exciting things in here. One is this necklace, which is one of my designs. It's the Staghorn Coral Necklace. And it's inspired by the uh, coral that I saw when I was diving in Indonesia. Um, so that's really exciting. And then there is also an interview with me. Me! <laughs> um, and it's about my favorite design, my favorite crafty place, and about the ocean and what we can do to um, pollute less, I think. We cannot stop pollution, but, well, it's a far-fetched idea, but uh, just about, uh, you know, eating less, less meat, that also helps, I mean, that helps uh, against water pollution and um, uh, making your own thing, so making your own shawls and clothing is a big part of uh, being more sustainable and um, consuming less. Um, and also just using less plastic. And I think we're gonna do a separate video on that because I have bought a lot of things to replace plastic in my life. and. Uh, some of them have worked, some of them haven't, and I think it will be nice to do a video on that. Um, yeah, but it was just a nice little interview, and um, yeah, I thought I'd share. And of course there are a lot of beautiful, beautiful patterns in here, such as the manta ray shawl, and uh, there are amigurumis in here. Um, sweaters, beach tunics, um, yeah, just wonderful, just wonderful, yeah, uh, so really go and check out this book it's in. It was uh, published in May, uh, and I haven't podcasted since then, so that's why I haven't showed it yet, but um, yeah go and get yourself a copy. Um, yes, yeah, so that is this shawl and I hope to be adding the pom-poms soon. Um, well, my Christmas socks will be getting a priority treatment, but uh, at least that I can wear this in um, fall, maybe. But with the pom-poms, it might be still kind of summery, so I don't know, we'll see. So those are the um, knitting and crochet projects that I wanted to show you. And uh, for the rest, I'll be talking about some spinning and natural dyeing. Uh, I have been spinning a lot lately, uh, mainly to get ready for the Tour de Fleece, and I'm not even sure when it starts. Um, I just know that it goes together with the uh, Tour de France, and I know that one hasn't started yet. So. Um, yeah, I just reaching out to grab my hand spun things. So uh, to start, I'll show you some of the yarns that I have spun. I think this was early, uh, late last year or early this year. I'm not quite sure. I think it was last year. Um, so really soft, um, muted pink colors. Um, and then earlier this year, BAM! <laughs> Just this um, overload of color, which uh, I really, really enjoyed to spin. These uh, were from Rolex, um, and I believe I showed this on the podcast before. Uh, right now I can't remember where I got the Rolex from, but I'm sure it is in that video. Um, it was somewhere in February. Um, and um, yeah, really, really enjoyed to spin this. And uh, I've probably put some clips in the intro uh, of me spinning this fiber, uh, which is delightfully pink. Um, 
and uh, I just really like it. It's a uh, pink merino with some rose fiber, some silk, and some um, sari silk, uh, which was very difficult to spin. Um, so I always divide the bat in um, in in uh, in half. And for the second half, I just took out all of the white fiber, uh, which I think was the silk and uh, rose uh, rose fiber because it was just too slippery and it would only, when I got to a white part, it would only pull out the white fiber. It would not attach to the pink fiber. And then when the white was all gone, the other fibers would not or would very, uh, uh, difficultly no, no it would be very difficult to attach fibers to the silk and rose fiber but um so I took most of it out but uh, I still love the result and it was much easier to spin once I had taken the other fibers out um, I still left sari silk in because I just think it's so pretty um, it uh, pulls apart really easily, but uh, it was just so pretty. It's just like a rainbow of color. Um, I have some of the fiber here. So this is the fiber that I'm spinning right now. I'll show you that later. And then this is uh, some of the fiber Oops. that I have used for this. And usually I spin up all of the fiber, but for this one, it's just the white had to come out because it was, it's just like buttery soft, but just super slippery. It would not attach to any other fibers. It was just, yeah, it wasn't a joy to work with. And because it's just so silky smooth, I thought to maybe use it for doll hair. I think that would be cute. Because I have a doll amigurumi pattern in my queue, which is the Elsa by Ami Lishley Designs, uh, who is Alexa. And uh, she has some wonderful amigurumi designs. Uh, and I'll be using the uh, rose silk fiber for that doll. And here is some of the uh, sari silk as you can see it's just rainbow of threads and it pulls apart like really really easily so this is really tricky to spin you have to be really uh, cautious but um, I really like that and then here are some of the nests from the uh, first half of the bat and I just uh, I just could not cope with the white fiber anymore. I might uh, work the merino into some other um, yarn but this just see it will only attach to itself so I just got fed up with it. <laughs> And because spinning is just really relaxing for me and not a, like, uh, I'm not really trying to do anything, you know, good. Uh, um, my spinning is not regular. It's thick and thin in places. I'm not trying to be the best spinner in the world. So I just, I don't care. Uh, but I just want it to be fun. So that's why. I took out that fiber and I love the result. Love it! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm being silly. Um, right, so this is the fiber that I spun, and there are some videos up on my Instagram uh, if you would like to see more. Um, but I've put some in this uh, in, the, in the intro of this video as well. Um, but yeah, here is the finished um, skein of yarn. 
I also did a Instagram live video when I was plying the yarn and that seemed to be really uh, fun for people to watch. So I am um, thinking of doing more videos of me spinning or plying or, or knitting or just working with my hands. I think it's very therapeutic to watch. Um, and this is the yarn or the fiber that I will be wow, that I will be spinning uh, next. I've already spun most of this half. So this was one bat. And I'm working on this half. And I'm just working from from the bat just just straight away, just just feeding it to the spinning wheel. And it just pulls really easily. And sometimes it pulls up a bigger chunk, but then you just kind of separate it. And when you think, okay, that's enough orange now, you just pluck a little bit from this and work it in there. And then go over to just white. You can do whatever you like. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to see more videos, uh, follow me on Instagram, newleafdesigns.nl, and uh, I'll be posting more spinning videos. I got fluff all over my face right now. Yeah, but I'm really excited for the Tour de Fleece. I have ordered some uh, yarn. I keep saying yarn. I've ordered some more fiber from Alternate Universe, which is an amazing yarn shop uh, close to Bristol in the UK. Uh, it's run by my friend Kim, who is Kim Smith Happy on Instagram. She's amazing. Um, and uh, I just think it's so inspiring how she runs this um, this yarn shop um, and um, yeah she does a lot of uh, vegan fiber as well but I've uh, ordered the uh, non-vegan ones just because I tend to not really enjoy bamboo or uh, or vegan silk um, as in this one <laughs> but um, if it's if it's just you know the bamboo I think it will just cling to each other but as soon as it as it is a blend of things uh, you always have the chance that it doesn't go together quite well. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I've ordered some Rolex. I've ordered a Merino braid. So we'll see. I hope to receive it soon so I can show you. Um, yeah, that was it for spinning. Let's get on to dyeing. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of natural dyeing. Uh, a lot of the yarn is still up in my Etsy shop which is New Leaf Designs. I will leave a link down below because Etsy is a nightmare to browse and whenever you type in New Leaf Designs all you get is like leaf-shaped earrings. Uh, so usually when I try to find someone's Etsy shop I just google Etsy and then their name and then usually it will turn out it will it will find the page whereas if I search for the exact shop name on Etsy it just gives me like sponsored um, search results so boo Etsy um, but still uh, it is quite easy to get your products on there so still I'm using uh, Etsy um, yeah, but if it was easier to do that via my own shop, I would. Um, so, there's still some yarn in the shop, and I will be uploading what will be called the yellow update. Why would it be called the yellow update? Well, <laughs> because all of it is yellow. Uh, I decided that it would be much more uh, easy for me and ease is what it's all about, right? The hustle can just die, right? I just, I don't, everyone is like romanticizing the hustle, but I don't get that. Like the hustle is not nice. So ease is the way to go. And um, it was, it's, it's easy to, uh, or easier, not easy it's easier to um, to die with 
one particular color or you know with natural dyeing it's just an extra step because you have to prepare the dye first uh, so you have a huge fat of that and I just wanted to use it all so this is a birch leaf and onion skin most of it is birch leaf and I got some beautiful mustards yeah I'm just gonna show you beautiful mustard um, and I also got a good amount of ginger which is very very light but I think it's so beautiful and um, there are two new bases so this is the 50% wool 50% rami and it's kind of more a cottony more linen no not linen kind of a more cottony feel uh, so that will be amazing to crochet with uh, it's not very fluffy um, it's it's good to knit with as well but it's like it's got that cottony summery feel so that's that's good and this is the um, 80 20 wool rami base which is perfect for socks because rami is a uh, all-natural substitute for nylon all of my yarns are 100% natural no plastic no man-made fibers um, and all non superwash so there you go and all naturally dyed <laughs> um, yes so those are my yarns. I especially love this color, which is kind of like, well, I've called it mustard green because it is kind of like mustard green. And in my head, this is wool jewel green <laughs> because I know Caitlin from wool jewel will love this color. Um, remember her, um, lore cardigan? No, it's, uh, the cardigan is called differently, but the yarn is called lore from um, the fiber company and it's kind of like this color and I love it I wish I had more than just one skein of it um, yes but there are some fun colorways in here as well such as this one which is from uh, curcuma or turmeric which was hell to uh, die with because it just how many times I rinse it it, it just kept coming out um, Yes, but <laughs> finally, uh, I think it has stopped bleeding, and I have two of those. So yeah, just keep your eye out. I will be updating updating the shop soon, uh, just as soon as I get labels on um, the ones that don't have labels yet, and uh, I have to get them photographed, of course. But there are still some yarns in the shop, so. Um, and those are uh, dyed with avocado and uh, also onion skin so there are some pink shades in the shop so those are really cute um, yeah so go over and take a look the last thing I wanted to talk about is the Oslo Stricke Festival um, which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly but um, because it just kind of sounds German I'm pronouncing it the German way uh, so yeah, Oslo Strecke Festival will be held um, September 6th through 8th, I think, and I'll be attending with my mom, uh, and uh, I'm super excited, so let me go, let me go, let me know if you're also going, because um, that would be fun, and I wanted to talk about the workshop that I'll be uh, attending, uh, there are numerous amazing workshops um although a lot of them are like only in norwegian and i thought that was really sad uh but you know fair enough um yeah <laughs> but i i wished i could um i could attend those as well but there are uh still a huge uh selection of uh english spoken workshops such as the one by um uh mina from uh the knitting expat uh she is doing a lot of socks workshops and um just i can't remember them off the top of my head but there are some amazing workshops with still open open uh, places and I'll be attending a workshop by Buku, who is a punch needle queen. Just look at uh, this amazing cushion. And so it's punch needled 
and it's just really, really pretty. Um, last year I was introduced to the wondrous world of punch needle by my friend uh, Mariana, who is Marachiros on Instagram. And she also has a punch needle book coming out soon. Um, just amazing. And um, also in a cool magazine there was a um, pattern by Buku. Let me just find it. I have the kit as well to make it, but um, I wish kits came with extra time because that's what I lack. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. There's a whole article. Oh, wow. Ah, so, yeah. Punch needling. Or needle punching, I should say, not punch needling. Yeah, but you can make such cool things with it. And so this is a pattern by Buku. And I'll be attending her workshop uh, with my mom. So uh, I hope... Oh, and of course the person behind Buku is Aruna Kunorai. I'll put the name here. Um, seriously, follow her. She's amazing. Um, I'm saying amazing a lot. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm uh, really excited to go. And uh, since I have the kit for that um, particular cushion, I might. No, I'm not saying that I will do it, but I really, really want to get some needle punching done before I go. Uh, I have needle punched um, a few things last year and it was really fun. Um, and I've ordered one of those big uh, uh, punch needles so I can use um, more rustic yarn or more um, just thicker yarn. And, um, and I'm excited to get started. Um, but I need this kind of like big hoop frame that won't let the fabric slip. Um, and right now I only have a small one, so I'm trying to get a bigger hoop. hoop. Yeah. Okay. I think this was quite enough for one podcast episode. I am starting to ramble. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think I need to call it quits. But... I hope you have enjoyed this podcast episode and do let me know if you're also going to Oslo Schlicke Festival because it would be amazing to meet up. Um, and uh, subscribe to my newsletter if you want to get that discount code for my new socks and if you want to be the first to know when the uh, yarn um, update goes live. So yes, I think I'll leave you with a little bonus Momo video. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.